Topanga, California, West Side LA. This is my buddy Kyle's property that I live on. I linked up with Kyle because he had a studio here and he kind of like took me in, gave me a little shelter, a little tin can. We hadn't made a record in like two and a half years and we've been touring our little pistachios off. So it came time to make a record. We've actually never had more than a month to write and record a record. So this time we had about two or three months to actually write the music for the record. <laughs> Of that thing. Welcome to the studio. In here you'll find all the hottest hunks. Here we have tan guys and tank tops hanging out. Um, this is Kyle's dojo. He's going to tell you a little bit, a bit about the gear. This is the dojo. And pretty much this is all for looks. Yeah, nothing works. Oh, yeah. None of this works. It's all, uh, it's all in here. It's where all the magic comes from. We actually ended up doing like 60 songs, 60 demos. Complete songs, pretty much. It was very like a Marine regimented uh, songwriting. You know, like, okay, we have this much time. It was like a, try to think of it like a nine to five job or something. Like I gotta put in like six hours today or something. Or eight hours to, to just focus on songwriting. You know, and sometimes you come up with like three things, sometimes you don't come up with shit, or you're like, what the, what the hell was that? We haven't grown up much, but um, as far as the sound goes, what's up Kyle, you want to chill? This one's more lo-fi, but it's a bigger sound than Chinese Fountain. It's, it's got more like crunch to it, that's for sure. And uh, I don't know, I think it sounds cooler than Chinese Fountain. What do you think? Yeah. I'm definitely gonna say that uh, Julian had a big help in it. He left his mark on this record, that's for sure. Kind of tried to like branch out a little bit and uh, we narrowed the songs down. It's a little less like uh, swampy as before or something I'd say. It's more, you know, I don't know, you'll hear it. I kind of floated around to start this band and we ended up in Costa Mesa after a lot of cruising and kind of disconnecting yourselves even more. In LA, I feel a lot more comfortable. We're like a red flag walking around Orange County. It's amazing how long we got away with being so illegal. You know, we're living in commercial spaces, being a haven to all the kind of weird, creative people, troublemakers. And I want to be able to be as loud as I can until as late as I can. And you know, around here, this is loft warehouse in the ghetto of downtown, yet to have been touched by all the Nice gentrification that downtown's been going through. It feels like uh, fucking zombies are gonna come down the street. Mexican pornographic comics. I love the art in it. The way we always did shit was always so by ourselves in our little places that we made, throwing our own little shows, we made it so small. Somehow you got touched or, or it connected with you because you don't have to really be anything specific to, to, to like us. You don't have to be a surfer or a punker or, or, uh, or anything. It's just uh, uh, so we make new records. I let down my guard, I tried a lot of things I normally wouldn't do. And I have no, I, no fucking idea what I did. We're just such late bloomers, we're stunted. Nothing's changing. So it's really the outside stuff that's changed. People going out and putting rings on chicks and uh, growing up in that sense. So when it comes back to making music or going on tour, we're still a bunch of uh, little shits. <laughs> Having fun.
for its muscular physique, sexual provocative movements during performances, and tendency to perform shirtless with his skin oiled and his hair in a ponytail.